These welders are DC welders only. You can only weld mild steel, stainless, copper, anything like that. You can't weld aluminium with them or magnesium on the TIG function. So they're only DC welders, but very, very good welders, real good quality. So in this video, I want to disassemble the MIG torch and put the TIG torch on. So the very first thing I want to do is I want to take the gas nozzle off. Now when you've been doing some welding, you can often get a little blob of metal on the end of the wire. That actually needs, would need to be trimmed off because we're going to pull the wire back through the torch and if you've got that blob on there it won't go through the tip. So trim it off, that's the first thing you want to do. And we're going to open up the cabinet on the side. Still got our wire sticking out the end of our torch here. So we want to wind it back onto the drum so that we're not chopping it off and wasting it. So all you need to do is disengage the drive rolls and wind the drum backwards and it's going to pull the wire back through. I'm going to hang the torch up. I want to hang on to the wire and you want to watch when it comes through here. As it gets through here, you don't want to let it go. So the torch isn't that long, it's only two odd metres. So very slowly at the last moment, just wind it through. Getting close there, there we go. I'm going to take the wire out. I'm going to stick it out through. It's got two little holes on the side of the drum. I'm going to put the wire through one of those holes. There we go. I'm just going to bend it round. And that'll stop it all unravelling off the drum. Our job number for the MIG wire was job number 7. We want to find where the TIG job number is. So we come down here until we see the word TIG down this column. Right down the very bottom. We've got uh, TIG written here, and the job number for that is job number 127. So we need to set the welder up with job number 127. So onto the front panel, job number 7 was for the MIG. We want to have this job number here reading 127. So we push the job list number, and it says number 7 and job. We want to wind it with this dial up to 127. It'll take three seconds and this will, it'll lock it in. So there we are, we're on job 127 and the torch is now, the welder is actually now set up to be a TIG welding unit. So from there, what we need to do is take the torch off. So we unscrew that, that's the torch. The uh, electronic feeder into the welder needs to be disconnected. That comes out as well. Just wrap it up nice and neatly on the side of the welder. Make sure it doesn't drag on the floor. And now what we want to do is connect the TIG torch. So in connecting the TIG torch, the wire feed for the MIG was on the positive terminal because the wire here is a positive feed wire. So we have to take the, the wire feed connector out of the positive turn. Lift lead on the TIG welder is going into the positive terminal. So the torch will be on the negative terminal. Just hang that there for a moment. So the connector on the TIG torch, it's got a couple of pins, got the gas nozzle, and this, on a MIG welder, this is where the wire goes. So we just have to line those up and hand screw them on. And on the other end of the, or on the side of the torch, We've got our terminal, which has to go into the negative terminal. So that's how you put the TIG on. It's simply two, two terminals, into the negative terminal for the torch, into the controller here, put that little cap, close that cap, which was for the MIG controller, and the earth goes onto the positive terminal. We're on 127. The only thing I need to do is put the um, guard back on. Just push it on. So when we were on MIG, we only had this bottom control panel. When we are on the TIG, we lift it up, and it opens up all the functions up the top here for the TIG. So, so that's how you set the torch up for TIG welding. So the EWM welder is set up for doing TIG welding at the moment, and we want to put the MIG torch back on. So what we need to do is take the TIG torch off. So that's the terminal into the negative terminal and just take the control off. 
So that's that. Now, when we put the MIG torch on, the wire, we're running a solid wire here at the Polytech, and the solid wire runs on the positive terminal, so the wire feed will be on the positive terminal, and the earth lead, the work lead, is going to be on the negative terminal. So we can straight away take the that lead off and put it into the negative terminal. And this lead here that's hanging down, that's actually for the wire feed, so that's going to go straight into the positive terminal. And then we take the torch. We need to line the head up on it. Uh, we've got some little wee pins on here which are quite small, easily damaged. This is the gas flow tube here and this is the wire tube. So we need to line it up to get it to fit into here without damaging anything. And it screws into place, nice and tight, or as tight as you can get it with your hand. And then you've got this little this, um, controller, the uh, lead off the torch itself. It's got all these pins in it, and it's got some notches that actually have to be lined up to get the head onto it. So you need to get down and have a good look. Don't just try and ram it on, because you'll snap all the pins off and damage it. So be very conscious of that while you're trying to line it up. And it's just actually a rotate into place. And that's the controller on it. The power control. So once we've done that, to get the wire to go through the torch, we actually want to take the tip off it. I've already unscrewed the tip out the end of the torch. If you have the tip on and you're feeding the wire through, it can actually come back and come through and hit the back of the back of the tip. It shouldn't do, it's got a cone on it, but often it will do. So I take it off and feed the wire right through, and then I put the tip on at the last moment, and then I put the diffuser over the top of it. So what I'm gonna do, got the torch on. I always lay the torch out nice and straight. So what we need to do at this point, there's already a drum on here of wire. The wire has been fed out through the side of the drum so it won't unravel when it was all disconnected. So what we need to do is disengage these two clamps here which are actually through the wire feed. We've got the two drive rolls here. So we want to take this wire off out of this piece here and because it's got all this bent up wire we need to trim that off and it's going to feed in through the drive rolls. I've got it through the back, through the next one, coming out the front. So I've got it through the drive rolls, I can click those drive rolls down into place from there. So I want to feed the wire through the torch and currently the job number here on the welder is 127. That's actually the number that we set the torch up for TIG welding. So we have to determine what the number is for the MIG welder. And that's on the side of the cabinet here. So to determine the uh, job number for MIG welding, we need to open up the cabinet. We've already got it open because we were connecting the wire up. But um, up here, we've actually put, it, put the number in here. It's got the different wires across the top here. It's got 0.8mm, 1mm, 1.2, 1.6. We are running a 0.9mm wire, so it's in between the 0.8 and the 1mm. And we are running Argus Shield gas. So if we were running a 0.8, we'd be running number 6. If we were running a 1mm wire, we would be running number 8 for a job number. But because we're running a 0.9 wire, it sits between the 6 and the 8, so obviously it's 7. So we need to set the job number to number 7 so that the torch will work. So around on the front here, we have job list number. You can actually pull this screen here off. That comes off completely. It just pushes on and off. We've got the job list number. So we're going to push that number there. And it says 127, which was for the TIG and the job. So we're just going to wind this dial down until we get to number 7. And it takes about three seconds to lock it in. You'll see it change here. There we go. So the torch is set up to now function. Uh, if you didn't set it on number seven, the torch wouldn't work. So I can pull the trigger on the torch and the wire will start feeding. Now this torch has a 
uh, six second cut out. So what that means is cuts off rotating after six seconds. It's the thing that you have, if you go away to Smoko and you've left your torch on the table and it's sitting on the trigger, all the wire can unravel or, or roll out through the welder and you'll come back and there's a huge spool of wire on the ground which is completely wasted. So to override the, that function, what we need to do is pull the trigger on the torch. You'll see it start to rotate. It's going to stop after six seconds again. So in order to override that, we come around the front of the welder, come around the front, and we've got this wire feed button here. So when I push that wire feed button, the wire will continue to go past the six seconds and it will actually start to speed up once it gets past the six seconds. So the drum is actually really starting to ramp up. You can see the wire speed changing here. And I just want it to come out the end of the torch and then I'm gonna take my finger off the trigger. There it is. So now we're in that position. I put the tip back onto the end of the torch and screw it on. Do it up with a crescent, just a, a little nick. You don't have to over tighten it. Don't want to strip it. And once we've got that there, we can put our gas nozzle back on. And we can trim our wire back to the stick out length that we're looking for. And we're pretty much ready to go. So just a matter of putting the, the cover down on the side of the cabinet. And we have set the torch up for the MIG. We've changed it from a TIG torch to a MIG torch. We had to put, take the TIG torch off. We had to put the TIG torch, uh, MIG torch on. We had to change our job number so that when we pulled the trigger on the torch, uh, the MIG torch was actually live.